Today we're making pasta from scratch. Hi everyone, welcome to Black Cat Kitchen. I hope you're doing well. Today I'm going to show you how to make pasta from scratch. It is so easy and only takes two ingredients. Growing up, I used to make pasta every Sunday, either with my nonna or my dad. We always used to have a feast on a Sunday afternoon with sauce and meatballs and spare ribs, but the main centerpiece was that fresh pasta. Here are the ingredients you'll need for this recipe. Feel free to pause. I'll list the ingredients in the description below. Today I'll give you the basic ratios for pasta, but it's one of those things you have to learn how to feel with your hands. So we're going to start with our flour on our board and you're going to make a, a well in the middle of that flour. This is enough pasta for two people. So I've used 100 grams of flour per person and one egg per person. We're going to break our eggs into the center of the well. Break those yolks and start to whisk up that egg. It will start to pull some of that flour and that's okay, that's exactly what you want. Once the egg is nice and whisked, you can start pulling more and more flour from the side. Once it comes into a bit of a thick paste like this, you can start using your hands to bring the rest of that flour in. And a good tip for making pasta is always have a little bit of flour and a little bit of water on the side. That way, if your dough is either too wet or too dry, you can adjust it. So you'll just bring the rest of that flour in and just start to work it with your hands. It will be a very wet dough to start, but it will start to come into a much thicker pasta dough. Just continue kneading until all of the flour has been absorbed and you'll have a nice smooth dough. After about five to 10 minutes of kneading, it should look something like this. It will be very firm and will bounce back straight away once you've pressed into it so you can see that's quite a, a firm dough. We're going to leave this to rest covered for about 30 minutes to let those glutens relax. Boop. So the dough has really softened up now. You can see I've been able to smush it quite flat and uh, the glutens have all relaxed. So that's ready to go and be rolled out. I've just patted the dough down into a little square and I'm just going to cut it into quarters. This makes it a little bit easier to work with when you're rolling it. Now I'm using my electric pasta roller. If you haven't got one of these but you have a hand crank pasta roller, that will work as well. And if you haven't got one of those, you can still make this pasta. All you need to do is roll it out as thin as possible in a long line. And I'll show you how you can cut it into large noodles. So I've taken one quarter of dough and I've just flattened it out so that it goes through the machine nice and smoothly. You'll wanna follow your directions on your machine and start at the largest setting. So this is your little knob on your pasta maker to change your setting. So you'll wanna start at the biggest setting, mine is number eight, and you'll work your way down. And I like to go to about a number two because that's the texture I like my pasta to be. So we're just going to give it a little dusting with that flour and don't worry if it falls through the bottom, you just want a little bit on that roller and then you'll put a little bit on your pasta as well. So after that first roll, to give the pasta a nice texture and bite, I like to fold it over itself in thirds. And then we just feed it back through. So give that a little press so that it feeds nicely through. Now I'm turning from eight to seven and so on and so forth until our pasta is our desired thickness. This dough is feeling nice and robust today so I actually took it all the way down to one and that is a perfect thickness. Now my sheet of pasta here is very long and it can be quite difficult to swirl out that, that on a fork. Uh, so we're just going to cut it in half before we cut it into spaghetti. Now I'll show you how to cut your pasta if you don't have a machine. You're going to dust your pasta with some of your flour. Make sure you've got a good little coating on there so it doesn't stick. And then you're just going to fold your pasta up. And then all you do is take your knife and cut yourself little slices. And there you have your noodle. To store your pasta before you cook it, you're just going to dust it with a little bit more of that flour. Just pick it up lightly with your fingertips so it gets coated in that flour, and then set it in a little nest on your little cookie sheet. But I'm going to use my machine. <music> of 
having a pasta cutter. Look how thin and beautiful those noodles are. So I've dusted these with flour quite liberally so that they don't stick together. And I've got my pot of pasta water boiling. Now we've made spaghetti here and technically these ones that we've cut by hand are tagliatelle. You can make them as thick or as thin as possible, um, but it's completely up to you. I really like these in chicken noodle soup. You can use whatever sauce you like, but today I'm going to be using the tomato sauce that we made from scratch in this video here. Go check it out. Two important things to note when you're making pasta, whether it's dry or fresh, you want a lot of salt in this water. We've put no salt in our pasta, so this is really important to make sure you have that nice seasoning. The other important thing, especially when you're using fresh pasta, is just put a little bit of olive oil on top of your pasta water before you put your pasta in. It will coat each strand so that it doesn't stick together in the water. If you're not going to eat the pasta within a few hours of making it, put it in an airtight container or make sure it's covered really well and put it in the fridge for up to 18 hours any longer than that and you'll want to either freeze it or dry it. You can dry it by hanging it on a special pasta dryer. It will hang like this and dry just like dry pasta from the shop. Now that our water is up to a vigorous boil, we can drop in our pasta. I like to do it in sections at a time, giving the pasta a little water a little stir so that there's some movement when it goes in. And this pasta is so fine, it takes no time at all. You can see how that olive oil coats the noodles as soon as it goes in. Perfetto. This only takes a few minutes to cook, so I like to give it a stir throughout the cooking process to make sure nothing sticks together. You can see that pasta is really plumped up and absorb the water. Have a taste of one noodle. If it has that nice al dente bite, so fully cooked on the outside, but that little bit in the inside, still that little bit hard, that's when you're ready to drain it. Now that the noodles are drained, quickly get them into your sauce. Give it a good toss around in the sauce getting each noodle nice and coated. It's important never to rinse your pasta after you've boiled it. Not when you're making Italian food anyway. Generously great with Parmigiano Reggiano. Now it's your pasta ready to go. Sunday afternoon at Nonna's. That pasta is so delicate and it just mm, almost melts when you bite through it. Absolutely gorgeous. And the sauce really finishes it off, so do check out that video. Storebot doesn't even come close to touching this. It is far superior. And if you've never made pasta before, give it a go. And if it's something you end up loving doing, invest in a set of good rollers and you can have pasta all the time. Thanks for watching Black Cat Kitchen. Make sure to like and subscribe and we'll see you in the comments.